Jan, it's up to you. Uh, wait a minute. I need to ask my students to have some uh, priority to share the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Okay. Eh? No. Ah, uh, here. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. 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 So, yes, we are up and running. Okay. So it's a great pleasure to have today for the Dias seminars I Ching Zhang from uh, Beihang University. He's a professor there. I think since uh, 2017, 18, right? And uh, he's a leading expert also in. Uh, in the holography and holographic superconductors. And today is going to talk about uh, universal uh, uh, statistics of vortices in, in holographic superconductor. So please. Uh, okay. Uh, th uh, thank you, John. But uh, I need to turn off the, the, on the right side, there's uh, some small sc screens. I need to turn off it, but uh, I cannot see the. Uh, we don't see them, so. You, you, think, you can uh, you don't see but uh, I can uh, okay so um, maybe I can remember something in the okay thank you John uh, uh, sorry for the delay uh, I'm very happy to uh, uh, talk on this seminar uh, actually I went to Dublin in 2016 16 yeah sorry yeah 2016 the, the year when I uh, left, left Utrecht yeah okay so yeah, I, I visited the museum there. Uh, there's a wild, uh, wild, right? There's a writer. Oscar Wilde. Also, yeah. U2, also the band, you too. Oh no, that's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Degenerate. So, okay. So the, the, the title of my talk is the Universal Statistics of Vortices in the Holographic Superconductor. So this is a, like a connection between high energy physics and the condensed matter physics. Uh, I think many of you may hear the holography or holographic superconductors. And so in this work, we just uh, uh, using the Kibotorek mechanism to realize some vortices in this uh, uh, holographic super, superconductors. So this work was uh, cooperated with uh, Adolfo. Uh, he's now in Luxembourg University. Uh, sorry, the, here I cannot see the, the mouse, uh, but okay. Yeah, so maybe this is a problem with the Mac, I use this. Also, Fernando is uh, his postdoc, and uh, Zhi Hong is uh, uh, my student, and Chuan Yi and Hua Bi, they are uh, Huabi is a teacher in the Yangzhou University. Uh, Hua uh, Chen Yi is his student. Okay. So first, the uh, Kibotorek mechanism. Uh, I think may, many of you may hear that it predicts the universal relations between the mean values of the number of the vortices or the topological defects and between the quench time, tau q. So here tau q actually is in the denominator because of uh, the definition in the quenching. So in this case, the mean number of the topological defects has a power law relation with the tau q. So here in the, in the power, d is the dimension of the, spatial, uh, of the spatial space. Nu is the critical exponent of the uh, related to the coherence length. Z is the uh, dynamical a critical exponent of the theory. Actually, nu and z are some critical exponents for the equilibrium theory. So this relation uh, has uh, some collections because the, this relation is from the non-equilibrium theory, but uh, this relation also borrowed some quantities from the equilibrium physics, yeah. And just if I remember correctly, the dynamical exponent is different for 
a conserved order parameter and a non-conserved one. Which one would be relevant here? Uh, you mean Z, right? Yes. Okay, Z is uh, actually Z from, is uh, related to the realization time. Do you deal so, with a conserved order parameter or a non-conserved order parameter? In the... I, it's not conserved. Okay, so that's Actually, Z is from the realization time, tau. So tau is proportional to the C to Z. C is a coherence length. I didn't write here. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I was wondering because there okay. are two dynamic, for any given model, there are two dynamical exponents. One depending on whether the ah, okay, is okay. conserved. I see. I see. Yeah, Z actually one, relates to the conserved. realization time. Yeah, okay. So, so our work actually uh, has studied the statistical prob probabilities of the vortices. Yeah, vortices is a kind of a topological defects in the, it's a, point defect in two dimensions. This two dimension is the spatial dimension, okay? And then we study beyond the keyboard Zurek. Okay, this was uh, in two points, the beyond keyboard Zurek. This means uh, we study the effect of the periodic boundary conditions. And uh, the second point is uh, we study beyond the mean value of the vortices numbers. Actually, we have studied the probability density function of and the large fluctuations away from the mean value of the vortices. So uh, Kibbutzberg mechanism, uh, it says that uh, during a quench, okay, if you quench the system and, that's, and uh, in this case, the system will, okay, if the system will cross a critical point, there will be a phase transition. But because of the causality, because you quench in the finite time, so the system cannot be correlated in, in a, in a very large uh, area, uh, in a very large distance. So the system can only be correlated in the finite, uh, finite size. So I, the finite size, I can denote it as uh, C. Actually, C is uh, like a, a correlation length or, or coherence length, yeah. So from the viewpoint of the symmetry, before the, actually before the critical point, the system in, is in the higher symmetry uh, phase. And then after the critical point, the symmetry will be broken to a lower symmetry. Uh, you can see the, the pictures below. Okay, in the left, before quench, the system is in a very high day because it's random seats like this. It's in a very high symmetry. And then after quench, here I, I use the different colors to denote the symmetry breaking domains. So the domains has a size like a C and different color represents the uh, breaking of the symmetry. The arrows is like, uh, uh, okay, if you consider a face of the superconductor, this arrow is uh, like the uh, values of the face, yeah. So the vortex will appear in the, between these three uh, areas, uh, like this, this small uh, purple one is vortex. Vortex exists there. So a, a very a good example is the, in the superconductor, the U1 symmetry breaking and, uh, and then, okay, in this case, you need to quench the system across the critical point. And then in this case, if it's in a two spatial dimension, the vortices will turn out, okay? So uh, actually the symmetry breaking domains are randomly distributed because uh, usually in the beginning, you put uh, a noise distribution of the seeds. So, because of these random seeds, the symmetry broken domains are random distributed. Okay, so, and then if the system size, I mean, the whole system size is, uh, we can denote it uh, as A, and, uh, and then if the symmetry broken domain size is C, so the size will be C to D, D is the uh, spatial dimension. And then the, the number of the density will be approximately the A over C to D. Yeah, just like uh, uh, the picture shows. Okay. And actually this uh, Kempozoic mechanism relation only holds in the slow quench. Okay, in, in the slow quench means tau Q is bigger because of uh, the definition from the Kempozoic mechanism. So this red line, actually I plot this figure in the log log uh, uh, figure. So the, the power law relation will be like a line, uh, a straight line. 
So in the, the red one, the red line is uh, like uh, the uh, topological defects number is proportional to tau q to the one over two. So this is in the two dimensional space uh, with the mean field theory. So if you take the new is uh, one half, z is two, and then d is two, you will, you will get to the power as one half. But when quench is fast, uh, fast means tau q is small. You will see that the vortex numbers will be like uh, in the in the platform. This is because of a finite size effect. Because uh, in this case, the, the, they were this the system will ge generate many vortices, and that because of the system size, the a is fixed. So in this case, the also the vortex has a finite uh, size. So in this case, the number of vortices ha has a uh, like a constant uh, behavior, okay? Yeah, so sorry, Eugene, I, I, I have a question. Uh, um, so your, vortex, your vortices are point-like, right? Because yeah, here. Okay, it's point-like, but uh, they, it, it still has some size, which is like uh, goes from the zero right. to some finite size. There will be like, you can uh, see like a coherence dense like this or correlation is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was thinking, so because in your picture you have this 2D configuration, right? In the pr previous slide, you have this uh, colored domains so with uh, that are on the plane, right? And, yeah. But I okay. For yeah, actually there will be some size go. Okay. I mean the vortex will go from zero to some uh, okay. uh, flat uh, uh, constant, right? So this size actually uh, is proportional to the C to the coherence length. Yeah, okay. So, so this is, I say the size of the vortex is the, the size that uh, proportion to the cosy. It's not the uh, point because point doesn't have size. No, 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 yeah. point like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But eventually yeah, yeah. if you were in three, full 3D, you could have some uh, line vortices as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. in That's three dimension, yeah, in three spatial dimension, the vortices will form a vortex nine. Like, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, here it's the two dimensional mean field theory. Perfect. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Kibble mechanism in condensed matter physics has many uh, applications. So, uh, here I listed some uh, experiments uh, results. And uh, you see in the liquid crystals, also helium three superfluids, also thin film superconductors even in quantum op opti uh, optics uh, and so on. So I dis didn't list all of them. And uh, if you are interested, you can check these uh, two reviews, which is uh, written by Kipo and uh, Zurek and uh, Adolfo Del Campo. Yeah. Uh, and, and then from uh, uh, 2015, <coughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, people in holography, they have tried to study the Kipo Zurek mechanism in holography. So, uh, at least there's some reference here. There's a holographic 1D system. Here 1D is a one spatial dimension. So the Sonner and Del Campo and the Zurek, they have uh, nature communication papers. And my students and I have some papers recently and also holographic superfluids in the two dimensional systems. And then there, there are also holographic superconductor system in the 2D dimensional systems. Yeah, okay. So here I just uh, briefly to talk about uh, a holograph pre holographic principle or ADS-CFT or gauge gravity duality. In this picture, the blue part is uh, a bulk, about the bulk about the uh, ADS black hole. So, and then on the boundary, there's a, on the boundary, which is, uh, has a lower dimension than the bulk, we, there exists the, uh, field theory. So in this field theory, we study the vortex here, there. And then we use the Lagrange. Lagrange is uh, simple. We use, we use the U1 symmetry gauge field coupled to the complex scalar field. So here, Psi is the complex scalar field. F mu nu is the uh, U1, field U1 gauge field theory, the, the uh, field strength of the U1 gauge field theory. And then because we study the quench, so we use the, we need to have time evolution of the system. So the best uh, choice is to use the Edinon Finkelstein coordinates, like uh, here, DS square, like this. Yeah. Okay. 
So this is the basic setup of the holographic uh, uh, model in, in our paper. So uh, next, we can go beyond the cuboidric mechanism. Go beyond means uh, we, we will not only study the mean value of the topological defects, we will also study the variance, also the schoolness, uh, even the, some large extremal values of the statistics of the topological defects. And then, okay. So first I will introduce the paper from the Adolfo Del Campo in 2019. He, he actually studied the kinks formation in the, in the quench dynamics, which, which will cross the critical points in the transverse uh, field quantum easy model. Okay, sorry. So, uh, he, in this paper, he argued that the, the statistics of the kinks will satisfy the Poisson binomial distribution. Okay, Poisson by, I think everyone may hear binomial distribution. This means you have a, a Bruni trials, and then the, if the success uh, probability is P, the failure prob probability is one minus P, and then you have N times of the trials, all of the, all of the success uh, probability are, are the same, are the same as P. But Poisson binomial means uh, is different. Uh, the difference is, uh, is like this. For each trial of the Bologna trial, the, prob uh, the probability for the success is different. This means if I have uh, P1, uh, the first time, maybe the uh, probability for the success is P1. But the second time, the prob uh, probability of success is P2, they, they are different. So this is a, a Poisson binomial distribution. And then he, uh, okay, in his paper, he finally got the, all the commu 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 cumulants, yeah, cumulants. Uh, they have the universal power law to the quench rate. So this picture shows the first uh, three cumulants. Uh, according to the quench time. So you see that actually these three lines are uh, parallel. So kappa one, kappa two, and kappa three, actually they have the same scalings uh, to the Tokyo, but uh, the, the prefactors are different. So in, uh, Adolfo has uh, described the number of successes in uh, a large number of uh, uh, independent yes or no experiments. Okay, so he assumes the success probability as P1, P2, and uh, then to Pn. Okay. I, I already talked about uh, the ordinary binomial distribution and also the poison binomial distribution here. And then, okay, the, 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 this sentence I already described uh, before, and then I will next. So for a binomial distribution, if you have the capital N independent times of the trial, and then the probability density function is like this, binomial of the capital N, uh, the binomial coefficient of the capital N and the, the small N, and then times P to N, and then times to one minus P to uh, capital N minus N, okay? So here the capital N mean, if, if we compare this binomial distribution to the uh, formation of the vortex, so here the capital N is actually the number of the symmetry breaking domains. So uh, the capital N actually is just like uh, I said, the area A over the C to D, okay? And then P is uh, the probability of success. So P here in the formation of vortex, this means uh, there, this point has one defect. So one minus P means, okay, at, at this point, there's no defect. So this is the, like uh, co comparison between the binomial and the vortex formations. So, okay, in theref uh, therefore in the Kibotrek mechanism, the mean values of the vortex number will be, okay, P times A over C to D. So here, there will be a prefactor which is different from previous case. We, here we have a multiplied P in, in front of uh, yeah, A over C to D. 
But, but for the Poisson binomial distribution, as I said, uh, for different trials, the PI are different. For example, here in this point, maybe the probability is P1. And then also here in the pink, the pink point, the probability uh, for the vortex may be P2. They, they, they are usually not, not the same. So uh, after some uh, calculations, you will see that the PDF, okay, PDF the, is the probability density function of the Poisson binomial distribution is like this, okay, PN is some, okay, uh, here, I, I, I don't know what, try to read the formula. Okay, here Fn actually is uh, all the subspaces, all the, all, all, the, all the subsets of the N integers, which is chosen from the capital N. So Fn actually is equal to the binomial coefficient of the capital N and the, the small n. So AC, A actually, we, are, we already talked about A. A is the area actually, uh, in this area, the vortex will form. So AC is the complement of A. This means, okay, in this AC, there's no uh, vortex. So it's, uh, so actually it's the complement of the A. Uh, you will see that because uh, uh, the uh, probability for each vortex to form is different. So this one seems very complicated, but actually you can uh, transform this formula to its momentum space, like a Fourier, Fourier transformation like this, Pn is one over pi two, th this formula. So here P tilde theta is the characteristic function of the uh, Poisson binomial functions. And then uh, here, you, uh, in his paper, he showed that the P tilde, okay, P tilde is in the momentum space, is like this, is uh, one over PK plus PKE to I theta. So here K is the case uh, energy level of the system, of the uh, IC model. Okay, okay, uh, as we know that from the probability theory, if we expand the logarithm, logarithm of the P tilde, uh, in this case, we will get the cumulants of, of, the, uh, of the probability. Cumulants here I, I, I wrote, by, wrote by the kappa Q. So like here, log P tilde can be expanded like a, a Taylor series in the kappa Q. So kappa Q is cumulants. And then finally, Adolfo has, uh, can get the, that for kappa one, kappa two, kappa three they are proportional to each other. And also they, they, they are proportional to square roots of the one over tau q. Actually, indeed, all of the cumulants are proportional to the square root of one over tau q. Uh, so we will see that here, the distribution actually is uh, not Gaussian distribution or not the normal distribution. Because previously, uh, before the paper of Adolfo, Many people think that the distribution of vortex are normal distribution, but uh, indeed it's not. Because uh, for the normal distribution, the higher cumulants, for example, if Q is uh, greater or equal to three, all the cumulants of a normal distribution will be vanishing. But here we will see that kappa three actually is proportional to kappa two. So it's not uh, the normal distribution. So the physical meaning of kappa one, actually it's the mean value uh, of the number. Kappa two is the variance of the uh, vortex number. So kappa three is uh, written like this. It represents the school list of the, school list of the uh, vortex number, but it's not exactly the school list. It also need to type the, uh, multiply the kappa two, uh, two, also has a power here, okay. So, uh, okay, in Adolfo's paper, he also um, numerically calculates the three kappas. So you will see, uh, indeed, they are proportional to each other, which is just like I showed uh, in the, uh, previously. Also, there are some experiments. Uh, this is uh, some group from China, uh, Guo Guangtan. They have uh, set up uh, experiments with uh, quantum optics. They also find the similar behaviors of the kappas. But here you will see that kappa three is uh, away from the parallel uh, 
but this is because they have uh, they didn't have a large number of samplings. So because Kappa three actually is very sensitive to your number of the tri trials or number of vortices. So here, Kappa three is away from the parallel. I think it's understandable. Yeah. Also the there's a, also another experiment, uh, which is uh, like a quantum nina. They use the two D-wave uh, quantum devices to set up this uh, experiment. They found that Kappa one, Kappa two, and Kappa three, they are a parallel to each other, yeah. So this is, a, a, this matches uh, Adolfo's uh, prediction very well. Uh, so here, this is a uh, Fernando. He used the, the mean field theory to predict the, uh, to study the three kappas, you will see that actually they parallel to each other uh, very well. But here the, in the axis, in the lower uh, plot, the uh, uh, horizontal axis is one over tau q. So the behavior is like uh, that, uh, is like increase. So it's not the decrease because the horizontal is different. So, we, we are trying to extend uh, Adolfo's uh, result because uh, uh, Adolfo's paper and also all of the, the uh, experiments, they are realized for the one dimensional. So we try to extend it to two dimensions. Also uh, in Adolfo's paper, he actually has uh, statistics of the number of pairs of the kinks because he used the periodic boundary conditions so in this case, there, there will be only even number of the kinks. So actually, the, uh, if, actually if there's a positive kink, this positive kink will be related to a negative kink. So he actually has studied the number of pairs of the kinks. So we are trying to study the individual numbers of kinks. This means uh, the real numbers of kinks. Also, we are trying to extend it to the strong couplings because uh, uh, you know LSCFT in the large n limit and also large toothed uh, couplings the 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 gravity side is weakly coupled but on the boundary the gauge field theory is uh, strongly coupled so LSCFT is uh, like a, a, some kind of a first principle to study the strong couplings so we are trying to we are trying to use the holographic a uh, holographic principle to study the two-dimensional uh, super holographic superconductors and then to study the vortices, how to generate and then try to make the statistics of the vortices. So, I, I should yeah. Ask a so the kinks are in 1D, right? But do, do Yeah, you kinks have... are in 1D. Yeah, yeah, but do you have kinks in 2D? I guess no, right? You have a... no, no, no. In uh, kinks only exist like uh, you break the Z two symmetry. So oh, okay. in one D, uh, in two dimensions, uh, I only see vortices here. Uh, yeah, exactly. I didn't see kinks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You go kinks mm -hmm. are like soliton, uh, like yeah, the kinks are like solitons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in two D, okay. you don't get the two solitons. Um, uh, yeah, but, but if you use the periodic boundary conditions, in this case, you will have uh, two, uh, I mean, even number of kinks. Even uh, number okay. means there will be usually one positive, one negative. Yeah, That's like that. Right. Yeah. So we are trying to study the real kink number distributions. Yeah. Also, okay, so we use the uh, periodic boundary conditions for the two sides, for the two dimensional space. So in this case, the boundary is like a two torus. So in the two torus, uh, there's a very nice theorem, which is a pangare hop theorem. In this, uh, in this theorem, you say that the Euler char characteristic, which is chi, chi equals two minus two G. Here, G is the genus of the torus. So chi is zero for the torus. So the pangare hop theory said that the total vort vorticity of the superconductors will be equal to the chi. So in our case, we will also have uh, even number of vortices. And uh, one, if there's a one uh, positive vortex, there will be uh, one negative vortex corresponding to it. 
So in our case, we actually try to uh, study the even numbers of the kinks uh, of the vortices, uh, not, rather than the number of pairs of the vortices. So in this case, we will get some even uh, binomial distribution. Okay, I will talk about that later. Uh, besides, in our case, we, we didn't find the vortices, which is greater than one. So the vortices is one or negative, uh, is positive one or negative one. So in this case, the vortices will be, I mean, the positive vortices will be equal to negative vortices because uh, we didn't have vortices greater than one, right? Okay. So uh, we, we actually assume the, because uh, we have made a large number of uh, the samplings. So averagely, we assume that the successful probability to form a vortex is P. But the failure to uh, form a vortex is one minus P. So here you need to note that uh, we so actually has assumed a binomial distribution rather than poison. Yeah, yeah, okay. Can I, can I interrupt? I, I, want, I didn't quite understand why the Poincare half theorem was playing a role here. I mean, this is often called the hairy ball theorem, if I remember. Yeah, it's like it's, some it's hair. Just, it's, it's associated with the, uh, uh, the zeros of uh, vector fields. Okay, I, I think I, I read from this guy's uh, paper. He said that this is like some hair, as you said, like hair in the torus <coughs> and uh, the vorticity. Yeah, you can, you can comb the hair of a torus, but you can't comb it on a sphere, yes. And then the number of zeros of it is, uh, is the, uh, the other characteristic. Yeah, actually in the torus, you can have a smooth hair, mm -hmm. but in the sphere, you cannot. Uh, yeah, this is a- uh, But, but is why, is, that, why is that related to uh, the number of vortices here? Ah, because the, the, the of the, yeah, because uh, the vorticity of the vortex actually is uh, like some, can have some index. Yeah, I think in the algebraic topology, the, this is uh, related to some index, but like a Dirac, I, 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 I forgot. The, the, I guess yeah, this index it. is related to yeah. this, uh, yeah. I have a same kind of question. All the characteristic is, um, is the, uh, uh, what is it, uh, the alternating sum of the Betty numbers, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but there is no reason why pi, but the vortices are controlled by pi one, not by the uh, Euler characteristic. So I don't understand this result. Just like, a, uh, I think, danger. Oh yeah, um, okay. So here I just uh, copy the results from the, this paper, but, uh, because uh, in this case, we need to have some knowledge of the algebraic topology. Um, uh, I think I read some uh, sentences from the Wikipedia. Uh, they say that the vorticity actually have some, okay, have some index. I forgot the name of the index. It, related index, to pi one. Uh, vorticity, already we know from the old paper of Nielsen and Olson that vorticity is related to pi one. The pi one. The oh. group, yeah. Okay, this is a classifica classification of the vortices, like uh, ah. pi one, in, in our case, this is uh, like pi one S one. But okay. why should it add up to zero? Pi one on a sphere or on a torus should, why should it ah, add up Because to of the, the background of the geometry. Okay, the, in this case, indeed, the, because the, here the vortices is um, represented by the directions of the face. So the face is uh, like, you can see the face is like some uh, flows of the vectors. Yeah, yes, so in I this see. case, yeah, so in this case, it's related okay. to the background the geometry of the- uh, of And, the, and the flow can go around the, the cycles of the torus. Yeah, yeah, in this yeah. case, okay. you can have mm -hmm. a smooth something. Yeah, smooth uh, hair, like a hair in the torus, yeah. Okay, so yeah, the pi one, is the classification of the vortices. Uh, this means that only you can only have the integer numbers of the vortex. But here, I mean, because uh, the background geometry is different, it's the T2. And then I used the, actually I used the superconductor to uh, form the vortex. That, and then the superconductor have uh, uh, the, the face. The face is like some 
directions of the vectors. So in this case, yeah, I, I can explain like this because uh, I, I'm not familiar with uh, algebraic say, topology. Sorry, Aichin, can we say that uh, if you sum all the possible vortices, you get zero on the torus and the sphere is that you would get uh, something on zero. Yeah, this is what I, I'm going to yeah, study. On the, on the sphere, I, I mean, if you have the point. sphere back, uh, uh, background geometry, in this case, you will have maybe two positive or two negative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, related to the geometry. Yeah. Okay. So in our case, actually, we we have cheated a little bit. We we didn't use the Poisson boy binomial distribution because uh, the assumption actually is also reasonable because uh, averagely we can assume that the probability to form uh, one vortex is p. This is in the sense of a uh, uh, large number of realizations, OK? Sorry, I lost an inch. OK. OK, so, so our distribution actually is a binomial distribution with even outcomes of the vortex. So we call this as even binomial distribution. So the next is try to get the uh, PDF of the even binomial distribution. Okay, it, actually it's easy to get because uh, if we write uh, denote P as a success, Q as the failure, so P plus Q is one, and also P Q is bigger or equal to zero. Okay, and so we will write this formula, minus P plus Q and uh, to calculate their n powers. Okay, okay, so you can use the Newton's uh, binomial formula to expand it. And then we get the A part and the B part. The A part is uh, the formula for the even numbers of vortices. B part is the formula for the odd number of the formula uh, of the vortices. So it's this, this formula is equal to A minus B. Okay, next. Actually, A plus B is the P plus Q, and the power is N. We already know that P plus Q is one. So A plus B is one. So from this formula, we, we can get to the A. A is like the one plus uh, one minus P2 to the N and over two. B is like uh, one, minus, uh, one minus A. So A actually is the, how to say it's the sum of the all the even number outcomes. So for the PDF, I mean for the probability density function, it should be normalized. So we need to divide this A because we need to get a normalized uh, PDF. So here we will see that the PDF for the even binomial is one minus A and then times the binomial functions, binomial coefficient, and then like a binomial distribution. But here, I, we need to emphasize that K is the non-negative even numbers, okay? So this PEB is the uh, probability density function for the even binomial distribution. Okay, it's easy because we already got the PDF. So you can use the formula to get the first uh, cumulant, cumulants. This is a, a little bit, a little bit tedious than the binomial distribution. Okay, uh, these kappas or these cumulants, they have they satisfy the recursion relation, uh, like this. Kappa k plus one is p times one minus p, and uh, also derivative of the kappa q to the p. Uh, this uh, uh, recur recursion relation is uh, very typical for the binomial distribution. So uh, yeah, in this case, we, we can say that we already checked that our kappa Qs are, are right. And because usually we can get uh, many numbers of the uh, uh, vortex, so we can take the limit to the infinity. And then uh, we, we can also fix the Lambda. Lambda here is uh, the capital N uh, times P. Lambda actually is uh, like the mean numbers of the vortex. So we will get uh, the uh, even, po even Poisson uh, distribution because uh, 
in, in this limit, the uh, binomial distribution will become uh, a Poisson distribution. So here, P, uh, PEB will become an even Poisson distribution. It's uh, like a, a set lambda times lambda to K over factorial of K. You see it's different from the Poisson distribution because the Poisson distribution here, the such lambda will become e to minus lambda. So this is a difference. Okay, we call this the even Poisson distribution. And as I said, lambda is like the average success time. So it's like the average numbers of the vortices. Okay, in the, uh, in the even uh, Poisson distribution, we can also easily uh, calculate the first kappas, uh, first the cum uh, three cumulants, it's like uh, here, yeah. So, uh, okay, we, we plot the first three cumulants. You will see that as the lambda uh, greater than five, or the vortex, uh, the mean number of vortex uh, greater than five, the, all, the, all of the three kappas, they were very identical to each other. Okay, so here we plot the PDF, the probability density function uh, of the vo vortex uh, and compared to the, in, in the axis, a horizontal axis, it's the N, N is the number of the vortex. So the, red, the solid red line is the theoretic line from the even Poisson distribution and the bars, the green bars is from the uh, statistics of the uh, uh, numerical uh, outcomes. So here tau q uh, is the quench time. So tau q is bigger. This means the quench is very slow. So the, if the quench is very, very slow, the, the numbers of the uh, topologic defects will, will, be, uh, will be less. So you will see that these uh, numerical results uh, satisfy the theoretical predictions very well. Yeah, even in even if the number is small, they will also yeah have a good uh, good match. So here I show the when the outcome is even. Of course, when outcomes are all, always even. So this is a PDF of the n compared to the even numbers of the uh, vortex number. So the red solid line is the theoretical lines of the even Poisson. And then, and then the stars are the numer numerical results. Here, the blue solid lines are the uh, ordinary Poisson lines, uh, Poisson distributions. So you will see that the numerical results actually satisfy the theoretical even Poisson distribution very well, yeah. Okay, here I show the numerical results for the first three cumulants. So here the, the blue one and the red one are the numerical, numerical results for the kappa one and the kappa two. Actually, they are proportional to each other very well if the quench is slow. But for the, for the blue one, the triangle, which is a kappa three, okay, it doesn't satisfy the parallel nine very well because uh, we only have uh, 1,000 uh, simulations of the samplings because- uh, So can you, the, can you comment on what, what the simulations were exactly? I, ah, 1,000 kind of samplings. This means that we only have 1,000 data. So no, no, I understand. What, what, how did you, you took what model exactly? You took this, uh, um, this gauge theory, this uh, quantum, yeah. this electrodynamics oh. with a field and you approximated it in some way. Or okay, the model is, is the the model is like a holographic superconductor. We have in the bulk we have the complex scalar field, which is also coupled to the U one gauge field theory, and then we decrease the temperature in the bulk. There will be the condensation of the scalar field near the horizon, but corresponding on the boundary of the ADS, the scalar operators corresponding to the scalar field will con condense as well, this, this condense actually will break the U1 symmetry. This is- So you uh, are simulating a 
uh, the vortex because uh, the quench cross the critical points. In this case, from the keyboard drag mechanism, there will be vortex, which is a uh, yeah. Vortex means um, in, in the vortex. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the compute. I'm trying to get the computation that you would have done in my into my head here, because you have taken a complex scalar field yeah. uh, on this um, uh, this geometry in the Eddington. Uh, yeah, in the Eddington background. Eddington background. Yeah, you have evolved it under what differential yeah. equation under some differential equation which is associated with. Oh, oh yeah, we yeah in the Eddington uh, uh, metric, and then you quench we quench the we quench on the boundary because uh, in in the bulk the a, the T component of the gauge field theory will correspond to the chemical potential on the boundary. Also, the second term of A T will correspond to density function uh, density of the electric. So we quench the density of the electric in the boundary. And then we, the quench in the in the boundary will also induce the quench in in the bulk. Yeah. And and, and how do you say? I mean, how are you modeling the system? You're you are putting it. Ah, I, I put the theory in the bulk. So in the, and how do you the, put it in the bulk? I mean, you're not doing a functional integral, presumably. Uh, you are not treating it as a lattice gauge theory. You are uh, treating no, no, it. No, no, it's not lattice. It's so a, you are just you are taking the differential you're you're evolving it in terms of differential equations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the differential equations, and yeah. you are putting in the boundary conditions on the boundary. Yeah, we, on the, uh, yeah, we put uh, uh, some our, boundary conditions in, in the ADS boundary for the also. For on, the, you're putting you're putting them on the on the ADS boundary. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. On the ADS boundary. Yeah. You put so, some initial conditions. But you yeah. then change them suddenly, yeah, or, uh, over sure. over a period of time. Yeah, yeah, over a period of time, and then I, okay, yeah, okay. Now I, I I have what you're doing, so okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so okay. everything, uh, I mean, the evolution of the equation actually was in the bulk, in the ADS space time. Yes, I understand. And it yeah. will induce some condensation of the scalar field on the boundary. Yes, yeah, yeah. In this case. Because we quench from the uh, across the critical point, there will be vortices formed. Yeah, so we uh, make the statistics of the vortex numbers. Yeah, so here, okay, back to this slide. So here, the kappa three is away from the parallel line because uh, we 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 doesn't have enough uh, numbers of the vortices. This is similar to the. Uh, experiment I showed before in the quantum optics they are here there their cover three is also away from the parallel so this is understandable okay yeah because of the, because if we yeah of course if we try to have more sampling so maybe we will take many years of the <laughs> time because the, for the tau q is bigger there will be we will cost them much more time to form one from uh, one uh, simulation. So we didn't have enough time to do that. Yeah. Okay. So here we, we uh, have rare, event, rare events. Rare events means that there's no vortices because uh, of course the, the generation of vortex is uh, have some uh, probability, right? So there'll be some cases that uh, there's a no vortices. So no vortices actually, is like, which is uh, like uh, away from the adiabatic limit. Because uh, if you change the system very, very slowly, of course, the, the eigenstate of the Hamiltonian will stay always in that eigenstate. So in that case, there's no vortices. So if n equals zero, this will have, have some meaning for the adiabatic limit. So we also, uh, uh, have uh, statistics of the n equals zero vortex. So here, the, the pink line is the fitted line for the numerical results. Numerical re results is the star, uh, is the, uh, the points. Okay. You will see that it's away from the blue line. Blue line actually 
is uh, the theoretical lines for the even poison. The black line is the theoretical uh, prediction for the poison. Indeed, but more times, I mean, if we have more samplings, this data will be closer to the blue line. Okay, blue line is the even poison distribution. So we, we, we can trust that if, if we have enough times of the samplings, the numerical results will be identical to the theoretical blue line. Yeah, but, but now the numerical results is a little bit away from the theoretical even poison lines. Okay, so next we study the cumulative distribution function because uh, this is just, you make the integration of the uh, PDF or, or some from the sum of the PDF. So here, uh, it's a little bit complicated because uh, there's a hypergeometric functions inside. But we can use Mathematica to plot these functions. Uh, and here you will see that the, the data, okay, data here is the different colors of the, the points. They, they actually satisfy the theoretical predictions very well. So, uh, okay, so this is the CDF of the, uh, of the vortex number. Uh, okay, still CDF, but here, this is the CDF compared to the uh, average number of the vortex. They also satisfy uh, very well, but the, the lower two panels of the figures, which is the CDF com compared to the tau q. Tau q is the uh, uh, quench time, but here the solid lines uh, just uh, goes to the like tau q is uh, 1000 like this, because as I said before, when the keyboard mechanism makes sense, the makes sense, which means uh, when tau q is a little bit, bit bigger, this means when quench is small. So the solid line actually is fitted from the keyboard mechanism because only in this region, the keyboard mechanism uh, makes sense. So here the solid line just, just uh, in the range of uh, the tau q, uh, uh, greater than tau q then uh, is uh, 1000. So I mean, tau q cannot go in, in the all areas, all ranges of the, from one, uh, zero to uh, 4,000, cannot be too small, tau q. Okay, uh, so next we also make the statistics of uh, extremal distributions, not only the mean numbers or some uh, variance. Okay, extremal distribution means uh, we can study the large deviations or some maximas uh, for a large number of re, uh, simulations. Uh, so from the probability uh, theory, there's a FTG theorem. This means fischer tibet glendenko theory. Uh, they say that the extreme maximum values of some IID, IID means independently and identically distributed variables. They will satisfy the extre generalized extreme value distributions. Okay, you can check the, the book here. So they, they have showed the GEV distribution, which is the general, generalized extreme value distribution. GEV here, here there's some, there are three parameters, which is mu. Mu is the location parameter. Sigma is the scale par parameter. And C here is the shape parameter. Okay, C is not the coherence dense uh, as before. So here, because is the shape, shape parameter. So you need to uh, uh, be careful that because here in, in, in the theory, they have assumed the C times X minus mu over sigma and plus one is uh, greater than zero. If it's not, it, it should be zero, okay? So this is uh, the types or the functions of the GEV. Okay, GV actually is a CDF. This means a cumulative uh, uh, density function, a distribution function. It's not the PDF. It's not the prob probability density function. So indeed, uh, you can take the derivative of the GV and then you can get the PDF 
of the G uh, of the extremal value distributions. Okay, it's like this. The PDF is like this. So the physical meaning of the PDF uh, is like this. So if C is uh, less than zero, this is called the Weibull distribution, uh, which in, in the plot is denoted by the green line. Here, there's a star in the green line. This means uh, for the Weibull distribution, there's an upper, upper bound of the distribution. This means there's no tail of the, of the distribution. There should be an upper bound of the distribution. And then if C is zero, this is called the Gumbel distribution. This means, uh, uh, which is uh, represented by the red line. Okay, here you will see there's a very light tail when the X is, uh, uh, is bigger. If the C is greater than zero, this is uh, called a fractured distribution, uh, denoted by the green line. Okay, here it will have a very he heavy tail. And, but, but the fractured bound uh, distribution also has a lower bound, which is uh, denoted by the a green star here. Okay, this plot is uh, for the parameter is uh, mu equals zero and the sigma is one. Also, can uh, see is is written here. Okay, uh, okay. So this is the theoretical part of the GEV. So in practice. Uh, if we will make the statistics to uh, for the GEV, actually uh, you can separate the data into some blocks, and then you can uh, usually you need to have uh, more than one hundred blocks, and then you can take the statistics of the to try to figure out the maxima in each blocks. This is uh, called the block maxima method. Okay. So in our paper, we have uh, used the block maximum method to study the maximum value distributions. But, but there are also other methods. It's not only a block maximum method. There are also other methods to uh, make the statistics of the maximal values. OK, so, so in our case, we have, uh, because the, there's no very specific ways to make the blocks. So we have made the blocks that uh, there'll be more than 100 blocks. So this is the numerical results for the fast quench. So here Tokyo is uh, 20. So the, the, in the upper line of the plots, we have made the 777 blocks. And in each block, there will be the 15 data. And you will see that the green colors actually is the numerical uh, data. The red line is the theoretical line. So they fit each other uh, very, very nice. Also for the lower panels of the figures, we made these data into 111 groups. And so in each group, there will be uh, 105 data. They also, satisfy the numerical results very well. So yeah, okay, both the PDF and the CDF are, are the satisfied very well. So we, we will get to that. For the first nine, the C is actually uh, negative. Uh, for the lower nine of the plots, the C is also negative. So if we recall uh, the distributions of the GEV, so this is the Weibull distrib uh, distribution because C is negative. So Weibull distribution means there's an upper bound of the distribution. Okay, I think this is also understandable. This means you cannot have very large, if you make a quench, if the quench, quench par parameter is fixed, you cannot have very large number of vortex. You need to have uh, the upper bound of the vortex number. So this is a, uh, yeah, reasonable, physical, I think. Okay, this is for slow quench. Okay, similar. Uh, uh, we also uh, separate these data into some blocks and then we make the, the, uh, the statistics. Also here, you will see for the slow quench, C is also negative. So this is also the satisfy the verbal distribution. So this, there's a upper bound of the, uh, of the vortex. 
uh, uh, besides, we also study some uh, exponentially the decreasing bounds of the vortex number. Okay, this bound uh, is called a Chernoff bound. Okay, Chernoff bound is written like this. Uh, this means uh, uh, we will try to study the distributions. This distribution is uh, like some CDF, is a cumulative distribution. Uh, this di distribution is around the mean number of the vortex. Here, the mean number is uh, the, uh, the n in the bra, a bracket, and, but, away, but a little bit away from the mean number. So delta here is a positive number. You can make the delta can be any positive number. So this means uh, we will study the distribution of the vortex number a little bit away from the mean numbers. So there, there will be lower tails and upper tails. Theoretically, they were slower. They will, they will be bounded by some these exponentially decreasing bounds. So here is the numerical results. So the data, the points, and I mean the dashed and the points lines are from the numerical results. And in the up, there's some solid lines. They, they are the theoretical lines. So different colors correspond to different data. You will see that actually, indeed, these uh, numerical results will be slower, will be less than the theoretical uh, results. This means they are indeed bounded by the Chernoff bound. So uh, both the upper tails and the lo lower tails satisfy the Chernoff bound. So this is a uh, try to get some uh, upper bound of the uh, vortex numbers, which is away from the mean numbers. Okay, we, we come to the uh, summaries. So in this talk, I have uh, talked about the uh, various uh, aspects of the statistics of the vortex from the holographic setups. And also we study the mean and the notch fluctuations of the uh, vortex numbers. So we, we found that the mean number actually satisfy the even Poisson distributions. Also the, their com cumulative distribution function also verified. Uh, they satisfy the uh, even Poisson distribution very well. Also we studied the maximum values distribution of the vortex number. We found that it's a wavelet distribution. This means there's an upper bound. Also we studied the tail distribution, which is uh, they satisfy some uh, bound, which is the Chernoff bound. Okay. Okay, so thanks for your listening, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and there are questions. Yeah, um, ah. I, have couple, I have a couple of questions. Um, so first of all, um, I guess um, that you could eventually extend your uh, result in a high, on a higher genus uh, surface, right? I mean, let's suppose that you are not on the torus, but on this, uh, let's say the, you know, the torus with two holes, let's say, or uh, something. Um, yeah, I mean, in principle, it's fine, but uh, numerically, it's uh, complicated. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, because setting the periodic boundary conditions on the two boundary, it's a torus. This is uh, very easy to realize. But if you have two genus, uh, I think that's uh, a little bit uh, complicated okay. to set the boundary condition. Yeah. Um, but for the two sphere, I think it's easy. Yeah. Yeah, as you said, uh, for the two sphere, sphere yeah. I think that the boundary condition will be easy, easier than two genus. Yeah. But in any case, in that case, uh, as we said, um, the Euler characteristic is not zero on the two the sphere, on the sphere. So, so I guess you would have uh, some uh, topological non-trivial contribution, no? In the yeah, Euler, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. There are two fixed point. On the sphere, yeah, yeah. So in this case, this means um, maybe the positive vortex will more than the negative, will be more yeah. than the negative, and also exactly the two positive vortex. Yeah. Um, yeah. My other question is, uh, I guess also you could try to extend this analysis in higher dimension because uh, if you start from a three plus one system, you have mm -hmm. this thing like vortices, no? And then you go to the holographic uh, ADS uh, five. Uh, oh, so yeah. ADS uh, plus one. Correct. Then, 
yeah, the, the guys in Yandro University, this mean, uh, my, my colleagues in Yandro University, they also real, they already realized the, in ah, the Vortex okay. 9 in ADS5 space Where, time. Oh, okay. Then, okay, if, uh, then the, for me, there, there is a question because, uh, so when you have this um, the holographic dual in a hot uh, space time dimension, also you said that you have uh, your U1 Maxwell theory uh, and the complex scalar coupled mm -hmm. to the U1. But then, in, in, let's say, if I'm in four plus one dimension, I could also mm -hmm. add a, a Church Simons term. And to break, oh, yeah, on the boundary, there will be some much in some So yeah. I, can, I can break naturally time versus symmetry and parity. So there would be something different, no? Because in your model, it seems to me it's the time reversal invariant in your system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, in that case, the, I think the phenomena will be interesting because in that case, you have Chen Simon's term on yeah. the boundary. So, yeah. Yeah, as you know, Chen Simon's term is also some topological numbers. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. So, this, so even um, without talking about uh, high energy surface, even in higher dimension, yeah. there will be more some topological and non-trivial, uh, I guess, uh, yeah. uh, you know, contribution, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But but I um, don't know whether my colleagues in Yandere University have considered the, such kind uh, of Chen Simon's term. We, we should check out then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was wondering, can, could you clarify the role of the holographic principle here? Like you have some 2D material that you could study as like a P plus IP superconductor or something, but instead you imagine that the 2D material is actually like the ADS geometry or something. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really understand the, why this was being used. Oh, actually, um, actually, uh, there are also some papers study the P plus IP uh, superconductor from holography. But in, okay. in, in my case, it's only some, uh, it's like the Ginsburg Landau theory. Because uh, from the action, from the Lagrangian, you will see that this is a very similar to Ginsburg Landau theory for the superconductor. It's not the P plus IP. But, uh, but indeed, okay. there are also people study the holographic P plus IP uh, superconductor. Yeah. So, okay. Um, but the so you the like the ADS CFT sets of correspondence. You don't use the CFT side bit at all, or were you actually putting the CFT side on a computer? Um, okay, we we actually compute from the ADS side, and then we get okay. the results from the CDF uh, CFT side. We didn't uh, we didn't start from the CFT. We start from the ADS. I guess because the reason is the CFT is strongly interacting. So we don't have code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ADS is a weekly couple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. so ADS yeah, yeah, yeah. They do everything so, on gravitational side. Yeah, yeah. CFT is strongly coupled. It's very hard to do yeah. analytically or productively. I think this is the main motivation to try to use ADS CFT in uh, an interacting system because you can uh, work yeah, yeah, yeah. in a week, uh, weekly interacting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Study from ADS is easier because it's weakly coupled. You can just solve the equations of motions or solve the Einstein equations. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And has anyone done the path integral version? I mean, you could put your model on a lattice gauge. Uh, it's a lattice gauge theory version. Uh, you mean the path integral in the CFT, right? Yes. But. Uh, I think it's very hard because CFT is strongly coupled. It's uh, well, that's where the path integral, that's where lattice gauge theory would come in. Yeah, but, uh, but I think the lattice gauge theory has a problem that there is a natural cutoff. You want to study a critical theory. Yeah, in that case, you need it's a different uh, theory. It's a lattice gauge, uh, yeah, lattice theory, lattice gauge theory. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I mean, I, I, gauge theory works uh, very well for massive modes and also gauge theories, but when you want to go in the deep, uh, uh, strongly interacting. Critics, well, that's exactly, no, that's exactly where you want to use it in the strongly interacting yeah. case. Yeah, for the lattice gauge theory, they can also study the strongly coupled uh, physics. That's, there. That's, what it, yeah. that's what they do. That's what it's used mainly Yeah, yeah, for. yeah. Mm. Uh, but it's not the ADSCFT. Yeah, it's different. Mm. Yes, but they, it should be complementary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, if you, uh, but no, if nobody you has tried that. The, is what you're saying. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think uh, of course, uh, because Kibble-Dirac mechanism is uh, some general principle. So if there's some quench, uh, some symmetry breaking across the critical points, usually there will be uh, a defect formed. Yeah. Yes. So if you were 
you will work in lattice gauge theory, of course, there are also uh, similar uh, topological defects. Yeah. Um, I guess it's have... also the translation invariance, right? You lose the translation invariance. So in, even if you're not yeah. the lattice, uh, uh, in that case, you uh, you doesn't have the translation symmetry. Uh, so. As to break translation, uh, the, the the lattice translation, it's, it's yeah, becomes more complicated. Well, but, well, that's part of the configuration you're looking for. Yeah, but but here in the holographic superconductor, we just break the U one symmetry. It's not uh, translational symmetry, so I think it's fine. There will be still the vortex will appear. Yeah. And, and can can I are you you put a black hole in your AD, in your um, ADS space? Yeah, but you didn't say what the temperature. Oh, how, oh. How, you, how you tune the temperature? You're presumably tuning it to some critical temperature, but you yeah, didn't good. tell us. What... Actually, there are two ways to tune the temperature. The first way is like uh, uh, Chesler did. He, so in, in their paper, they tune the temperature. To, di to directly tune the radius of the black hole. Uh, in our case, we tune another way. We just uh, quench the charge density on the boundary because uh, uh, in the holographic superconductor, the charge density actually will be effectively equal to the temperature. So we, we tune the charge density. We didn't really oh, yeah. tune the temperature of the black hole. We tune some parameters equivalent to temperature. They have okay. the same... Yeah, dimensions. Okay. If I may, I, I have a very naive question. Mm -hmm. So this, this is just a really new ground for me. Um, you mentioned that you use the block maximal group optimization. Is your result yeah, yeah, yeah. dependent on which method of optimization you use? Uh, this is uh, the, this method is the, okay, here, right? But, yeah. Okay, indeed, in the probability theory, there are several ways uh, to make this kind of statistics. Uh, the most frequently used is a block maximum method. This means uh, you have a bunch of data, and then they, you separate separate them to some uh, blocks, some groups. You can randomly uh, separate them, and then you choose a maxima in each group, and then you to make the statistics to plot the nines for the maximas. Yeah. yeah. So this is the block maximum methods. And uh, is your result, how dependent is your result on this method if you use a different method? Oh, actually uh, I, the, per, uh, the final results will, of course will depend, depend on your, uh, how to separate the blocks. For example, from the here, the in in the first nine of the two figures, we have uh, separated them into seven hundred and seventy-seven groups. But in in the lower nine of the blocks uh, figures, we have separated them into one hundred and eleven. You will see that the, the parameters are different, but they are close to each other. Like mm -hmm. a mu, the first one mu is uh, thirty-two something, mm -hmm. and the second one mu is uh, thirty-six. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mu is a location of the parameter. They, they are not exactly the same, but they will be similar to each other. And also can see actually are all the negative. Yeah. So this is a little bit, uh, appro how to say, uh, approximate. It's not so exact, but from these approximate method, we can still see some general idea, uh, general results from it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, other questions? Perhaps just say, mm -hmm. the, 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 model that you uh, you studied was forced to be mean field because you didn't include a 5-4 coupling. Is yeah, that on the boundary, it's, uh, on the boundary, it's mean field because it's in a large limit. So it's like a, a large limit kind of uh, mean field theory. 
But it would have been natural to include a self-coupling for the uh, scalar field, for the company scalar fields. You mean the coupling between out. the gauge fields and the, the scalar field? No, between the scalar field and itself. Uh, ah, you mean the M square, right? No, the, uh, the a, a lamb, for something that I might call a lambda times of psi to the fourth. Yeah. Or ah. psi to the sixth, the potential. Yeah. Yeah. Here we only have the here. We only have the like uh, the this is like uh, the Abinia Higgs model. We, yeah. we don't have a psi. Well, it's a it's a like a free abelian Higgs model. Yeah, it's like a free abelian Higgs. We don't have the psi to four this kind of. Yes, exactly. Uh, and, we only have the but and presumably that is what's forcing it to be uh, uh, main field exponents. Oh yeah, um, of course you can also add the potential like a uh, five to four. Uh, yes, and I would naturally want to make that strongly interacting. Yeah, that's which, uh, which would give more interesting exponents. Yeah, yeah, but but okay. There, there's also holographic papers to study this kind of potential, but the, they also got the new critical exponent, which is also one minus two, also z is two. So. This well, if, if, I, if I put in a 5 4 term, it won't be. Mm -hmm. It will be in the, it should be in the XY uh, universality class. Oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, if you add the 5 4 term, the uh, results will be similar, but the, some quantities uh, will be different. Mm -hmm. Such, so, yeah, quantities will be different, but the, the general, Picture will be the same. Yes, but you, I mean, you would you would have access to uh, some of these other exponents. Uh, some of them, presumably you would be able to see the z exponent and the new being different from one. Mm, uh, okay, from holography, it's different. It, it's a different. Uh, it's different because uh, in holography we still have another scale, which is the, the n large n. N actually is the the color. Uh, the number of the colors on yes. the boundary CFT. So large and n actually will is another scale which will su suppress other scales. So the boundary field theory is a, a mean field theory, is a kind of mean field theory in the sense of large n. Yeah. So if you add the five four term, um, well, then, you, then you have gone to a different theory, though, haven't you? That would not be due, that would be due to Yang Mills theory on the an SUN Yang Mills theory rather than the civilian uh, Higgs model. Mm. But, but here you still have the U1 gauge field theory. No. Uh, you mean F here, F term. But this is, is, this is one, right? yes, this is a billion, yes, an F. Mm -hmm. Whereas the large so, N is forcing a non abelian nature to it. Uh, but if you want to have SUN, so here F term will be the long non abelian, the Yang Mills terms. Yeah. Yeah, I mean if you have the long abelian Yang Mills terms, of course the boundary field theory will be will be different. Yeah. Uh, just a nice question also. Even if we stand the abelian case, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that the dilaton uh, that couple to the to the Maxwell, right? So I mean uh, let's suppose that uh, it's not Maxwell, but it's the dilaton. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and you would modify a little bit also the, the physics on the boundary, right? Yeah, sure. Actually, yeah, sure. If you add some dilaton yeah. scalar fields, it, it's uh, another theory. It's different. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there are already some papers discussing about the dilaton fields. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah. You could use also the axiom. <laughs> I mean, you could uh, add an axiom. Uh, axiom, okay. Uh, <laughs> last makes... year, mm. I think maybe last year, there, there's already some uh, review papers on the holographic theory yeah, of yeah. axioms. So the model you can think uh, already is <laughs> already been studied. Exactly. Now, because that is a natural way to break again time reversal proximity with a dynamical axiom in triple one dimension. You break time reversal symmetry. You modify also the Maxwell equation. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. You get this, uh, you know, the, you can get the Yeah, sure. Actually, you can change the background. You can add other meta yeah, fields. These are yeah. some, yeah, some methods to extend the theory. Yeah. Okay, but it's done. Yeah, for the axion, it's uh, already already done. But 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 they didn't study the vortex. They study some uh, like uh, con condensation, also the connectivity, also some uh, uh, some other heat prob probabilities. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I guess it's, it's already quite late in Beijing, right? Yes, I think so, yes. It's uh, 11 p.m. And, and okay. your student is still there, right? As... Yeah, my student is still uh, here, you see? see? You see, many, <laughs> many serious people, huh? <laughs> A girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm saying, that, uh, before midnight, you don't leave the office, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop the recording maybe at this point. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah. Uh, we can just uh, chat. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. that was, thank you for the seminar. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, thanks for Bye. your invitations. Uh,